Good evening. Welcome to yet another Cyclopath, Cyclocast. Tonight, conflation, a quick introduction. My name is Landon Boma. Let's get started. I often use the term conflation to describe the process of combining two maps into one. But it's not a very uh, well-known term. I'd say it's used as often by GIS geeks as it is by everyone else, which isn't very often. John Hout describes it as collapsing of distinct items in such a way as their differences are apparently lost. Wiki says it happens when two related but distinct items become confused until there seems to be only a single identity. Esri no longer uses the term. In ArcGIS, they call the act of conflation spatial adjustment. Not that the term is no longer being used, though. The industry still uses it. The GIS Wiki talks about it. And at OpenStreetMaps, you'll see that they describe the process of conflation. It's basically merging maps, or combining map data from separate sources into one. At its core, conflation is just taking one line segment from one source and trying to find a match in another source. As you'll see here, it's not always an exact geometric match. We're assuming that the two sources are logically related, but not always geometrically related. You can also see that sometimes the whole line segment doesn't match, but just a subsegment of the line segment. A number of years ago, Vivid Solutions made an extension for the OpenJump application to help conflate two data sources. If you're not familiar with OpenJump, it's a lightweight and nimble GIS editor. I like to use it to edit geometry because it's, it's nice and quick. Unfortunately, Vivid's extension, called Roadmatcher, is buggy, at least with my version of Java and uh, OpenJump. There we go. No pointer exception. But OpenJump, or Roadmatcher, has some cool features. But they're probably not the best for Cyclopath. In fact, it leaves us a bit of cleanup to do after it runs, which is what this screencast is all about. Which brings us to the last topic of tonight's episode, setting up ArcMap. First, set up your toolbars so that you can see the editor toolbar and the spatial adjustment toolbar. You'll see them here on my screen. Next, we want to set up some keyboard shortcuts. So if we go to the Customize Mode dialog and we click Keyboard, if we look for attribute transfer, you'll see that I've mapped the attribute transfer tool to control shift D. And if we look at the editor category and find the edit tool, you see that I've mapped that to control shift E. Now back on the map, I use about five keyboard shortcuts. The two that I just defined and three that Esri has already built in for us. If you hold down the Z key, you'll see the uh, magnifying glass plus sign so that we can zoom in. If you hold down the X key, you can click and zoom out. And while you hold down the C key, you can pan around the map. Notice that when you release the key, the tool goes back to what it was before. Before we can use the attribute transfer tool, we got to make sure that the mappings are set up. So under the spatial adjustment menu, if you look at attribute transfer mapping, you'll see that I've set up a number of fields to be copied when I use the tool. Now it's just a subset of all of the fields, and you can see here with the drop downs that you can map from layer to layer, but I'm only mapping from one layer to the same layer. To show you an example, here are two line segments that represent opposite directions of the same road. This happens to be Hadley Avenue in Oakdale, Minnesota. Now I'm going to click Control Shift. E to choose the editor tool, which I can also use to select blocks, and I'll show you that I have two line segments here. Now one of them has more data than the other that I want to copy over, and it happens to be this one that's called matched. It's the reference line segment here. Now I need to select the line segments and use the highlight feature to figure out which one I'm copying from and which one I'm copying to. And now that I know that, I'm going to copy from this yellow highlighted line to the uh, blue-green unhighlighted line. If I hit Control shift e well, let's see if that works again. Come on, Esri. It's not working. Hmm. 
I don't know why that is. There we go. Something was wrong with my keyboard there momentarily, but now we're back in business. Okay. So now, if I hit Control Shift D to select the attribute transfer tool, I'm going to click on the source byway. And you'll see that I get a nice line here with an arrow. And then I click on the destination byway. And if you look down in the attribute table, as soon as I click, you'll see that the uh, fields get copied. And they are copied. And that's the introduction to completion. Thanks for watching.